Spyro the Dragon is one of the most iconic PlayStation series of all time, and fans have been foaming at the mouth to experience these classic worlds in glorious high definition. Although the Spyro Reignited trilogy is not being developed by the original team over at Insomniac Games, the development studio Toys for Bob has been hard at work to make a faithful recreation. However, that's not to say that these games are going to be identical to the ones from 20 years ago. Hi, I'm Sydney with The Leaderboard, and today we are going to look at seven changes in Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Aesthetic, not mechanics. Although it would have been easier if Toys for Bob had the original source assets to work with, the sad reality is that most of them have been lost to time. That being said, the developer didn't want to take extreme liberties with the classic games and did their best to keep the changes minimal so that the game felt the same as it did back in the day. Enter Spyroscope, an in-house program whipped up by Toys for Bob that ran the original Spyro games in emulation and scanned the game along the way, providing extremely accurate information in regards to item placement, heights, hitboxes, and more. This data was invaluable in getting everything properly translated to Unreal Engine 4. This means that even though all of the models used in Reignited Trilogy were made from scratch, the game plays the way you remember it. Even Spyro is frame perfect to deliver accurate mobility as he navigates the environment. Toys for Bob even spice the graphics up by adding more depth and realism to the game environment in an unobtrusive way that didn't get in the way of the classic gameplay that diehards love. For instance, the more dynamic grass that Spyro can interact with as he moves. You can even burn the grass with your fire breath. While something like grass might seem insignificant, it really goes to show that Toys for Bob wanted to enhance the experience in any way they can. Some of the new depth serves to enrich the world itself by fleshing out its lore in subtle ways. A shining example of this is the dragon Nevin. This guy is a painter, which is neat in and of itself, but if you look inside his castle, you can now see some of the art that he's created. That's not in the original game. Toys for Bob was able to extract the meshes in the original games with their spiroscope tool, and they had their artists simply draw over to enhance the original, while still working with the constraints that make the classic gameplay feel the way it does. Designs and animation. Speaking of Nevin, you might have noticed that he looks a bit different from the original game. In fact, all of the Elder Dragons were redesigned to give each of them a more distinct appearance. And since every single model was recreated from the ground up, this gave them the opportunity to revamp all of the designs. The dragons, the enemies, and Spyro himself all got a makeover. While some updated versions of classic games, like the recently released Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, tried to stay as faithful to the original models as they could, the Spyro Reignited Trilogy isn't afraid to play around with proportions or drastically rework character designs into something more modern. But designers have ensured that the new designs share the aesthetic and general appearance of their older counterparts. I mean, just look at how much Nasty Nork, the main antagonist from the first game, has changed from a killer lima bean to a ferocious monster. However, that's not to say that every character has been completely reworked. Take the Egg Thieves, for example. The new version of the characters is a pretty faithful adaptation, but we can now see their full face in its terrifying glory. Looks like these guys are poised to haunt the dreams of a whole new generation of kids. All of the animated mannerisms of characters characters from the original series were brought over as well, but with advances in technology, they're more expressive than ever. While the charm that radiated from the original series is certainly still intact, the Reignited trilogy oozes with personality. Censorship. While most of the changes in characters have been received pretty well by fans, there's one aspect that's causing some purists to riot. Censorship. When it was shown that the Nork commandos of the Twilight Harbor level had the bullets in their guns replaced with purple goop, a la Splatoon, plenty of fans were outraged by the change. While this has been the only instance of censorship seen thus far, some critics worry that this is a slippery slope that will affect other parts of the game, like the laser gun wielding character Agent 9 and the gunslinging dinosaurs in the third game of the trilogy, Spyro Year of the Dragon. It is worth noting, however, that the censorship might only be affecting firearms in the game, as it appears that the infamous Mooney Nork will be making a return appearance according to the ESRB rating for the game. As a fun side note, the official ESRB Twitter account directly addressed this by saying, they've got to give the people what they want. However, I think we can all agree that Bombo the Flag Keeper from Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage will be censored and or totally reworked for obvious reasons. Music. The music in the Reignited trilogy also got a note-for-note -note update. The original Spyro soundtracks are beloved, and some fans were worried that the original composer, Stuart Copeland, the drummer from The Police, wouldn't be returning. In an excellent move, Copeland was brought back for the Reignited trilogy, and the music was given a slight twist. Along with work from expert remixer Stefan Vankov, the Reignited trilogy features a dynamic soundtrack that varies depending on the gameplay. For example, a stronger percussion score is added to the mix whenever Spyro is dashing, or the music will have a 
bit more echo when he is inside of a building. This dynamic music was something that Copeland had originally envisioned for the game, but it was not implemented in the original because of hardware and memory constraints. But if you aren't on board with these new elements, then don't worry. All of Copeland's original tracks have been brought back, and Toys for Bob was even nice enough to include the ability to toggle between the two. Now, all of this is great and all, but there is one new area of the game that doesn't have any music. The menu to select which of the three games in the trilogy you want to play. The new song, Tiger Train, serves as a theme song for the Reignited trilogy and is stuffed to the brim with riffs and motifs from the first three games. Voice acting. All of the voice clips from the original series were so low quality that Toys for Bob was unable to remaster the audio. Because of this, the developer brought back as much of the original cast as possible to re-record character dialogue. Famous voice actor Tom Kenny portrayed Spyro in the latter two games, but for the Reignited trilogy, he actually replaced Spyro's original actor, Carlos Alazraki. As a reference, Kenny would listen to his original recordings and do his best to mimic the delivery. He's quoted in Newsweek as saying, the hardest part was matching those performances from 20 years Years ago. With all this experience under my belt, I wouldn't read the line in that way. Fans are very much sticklers, so the hardest part was staying in the lane from 1998. You want to give them all the good stuff of an update without messing up the experience. He went on to joke about how he enjoyed listening to a Key's original recordings for reference since it gave him a break from listening to his own voice. I can relate. Quality of life. The original Spyro the Dragon was developed before the PlayStation Dual Analog Controller was in widespread use. As a result, the controls for the game are different than what we're used to. For example, you use the shoulder buttons to move the camera. Thankfully, Toys for Bob has updated the controls for the Reignited trilogy, allowing for a smooth transition for its players instead of that awkward feeling of when you go back to an old game and it's a lot clunkier than you remembered it. In addition, Toys for Bob wants to emphasize that they see these games as one overarching product. This is why it's important for them that the user interface is identical across all three games. The team has also promised a fast travel system to make it easy to get from level to level and game to game. There also seems to be a new marker in the overworld indicating the location of new challenges. This should streamline the process of figuring out where to go, since players no longer have to aimlessly wander around an area and hope they stumble across a challenge. New content. An article in Game Informer mentioned that the Reignited trilogy will feature original in-game content in the form of all new orb challenges. This is peculiar as orbs were only collected in the second game in the series, Ripto's Rage. I would like to mention that Ripto's Rage did have some scrap dialogue in the game implying that there was a harder version of the Save the Hippo orb challenge, so that could possibly be included in the game along with other scrap challenges that we don't even know about. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy did something similar by including downloadable content of Stormy Ascent, a level scrap from the original game for being too difficult. With any luck, the added content will help turn the Reignited trilogy into the versions of the game that the original designers over at Insomniac have always wanted them to be. I'm Sydney with The Leaderboard, and if you like this video, be sure to check out some other videos, like 107 Facts About Spyro. Well, thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time.